যেমন বিয়ে পাশ করা নায়িকার কখনো বিরহে গান গাওয়া উচিত নয় আর নায়ক হলেই If we break it down to the bare essentials, there are three steps to understanding Satyajit Ray's cinema better. That is not to say that the experience of watching his cinema isn't enough by itself, or that there is some kind of urgent need to analyse his cinema beyond what it states obviously. But as is the case with any piece of art, understanding a film often magically leads to understanding the world better. Milan, Ritchie, Tiket Shumutre Dhevi Ramutra. ছিলেন He is possibly one of the very few directors of his stature to make so many films about children about experiencing a complicated world as an innocent person. Tumi chhater paanche dere pore uthechile? Keno? Jodi pore jete, tumi jana na kon korte hoy na? Captain Spark ke chhater paanche dere the. Ke? Captain Spark In both of the detective films he made adapting his own stories to screen he specifically focused on the world of two highly imaginative children if you note down the similarities between these two characters you would see that they are both unquestionably innocent they have a faith in the distinctions between right and wrong a faith that adults cannot afford to have because most adults themselves are in that gray area But the innocence of these children does not mean that they are unintelligent. In fact, these children often know and see more than some adults do, and they process the complexities of the world better than adults, perhaps because they're innocent. Children bracket his filmography. His first film, Pothir Pachali, was driven by the narrative of a brother and a sister. His final work, Aguntuk, also features a child as a central character. In Pothir Pachali, Opu is a little dreamer, tucked in the greenery of a village in Bengal. By the second film of the Opu trilogy, he is an ambitious teen. The final film of the trilogy closes with Opu's son, another little boy. Opu is a character in the film so he cannot see the object that repeats through his story to his sons but if you are obsessively noting down repetitions in Ray's cinema like I did you can probably see it little opu had seen a large serpentine train with awe as it passed him by again and again the train would take everything he loved from him two major deaths in the film are associated with the presence of the train durga his sister who had fallen before she could see the train would never live to see it Oporna, Opu's wife, would go away by train and she would never return. The train is what makes Opu so urban. It takes him towards his urbanity, towards his individuality. But the train is also what separates him from the people he has loved. The train is his curse. And here's the little trick that Ray plays with you. When Opu and his little boy reunite and set out on their own adventure, Ray shows you a toy train in the background. This time, Opu leaves the train behind. It is just a toy. It is not his curse anymore. And so, with the sun on his shoulders, Opu's silhouette melts into the horizon. A child finds hope through his father. The second step is to know Ray through his own words. Uh, we have a fairly backward audience here, I must say, in spite of the film society movement and all that. If you consider the large audience, it's a backward audience, unsophisticated audience, exposed to the commercial Hindi cinema more than anything else. Ray's interviews are available on YouTube as they are in print. You would be particularly amused, not to mention impressed, if you read his defense for some of his films against the criticism they were sometimes subjected to. A lot of critics took great offense because Ray toyed around with the novels he adapted, often changing his source material so much that you might as well read his films as partially original stories. There is great joy in reading a man as structured, witty and almost hypnotizingly articulate with his words. Right from the start, I have had an ideal audience in mind. The kind of audience that would uh, respond uh, rightly to my films, to the sophistication, to the subtleties, to everything. And uh, when you find that you have achieved your purpose, you're... you're delighted i mean you're transported 
but you would learn something of significance from the reasons he presents for changing the screen adaptations. The idea that a story, sometimes as old as the lore and sometimes new and avant-garde, changes with the storyteller. We leave something of ourselves in the stories we read and tell and love. And so with each teller the story is reborn still old world and charming at its core carrying the signature of its original creator in it yet it's a little different each time new and endearing the third step and this is particularly important is to know that his stories are your stories too but i have written all kinds of stories i mean humorous stories people about stories about people not fantastic very normal people human beings I like to write about lonely people and things happening to them. In the grandness of the legacy of his films and the magnificence of their afterlife, we often forget that Ray made stories about stunningly commonplace human experiences. That is why they remain so relevant. You and I are still living these, and Ray's great gift to us is this mirror that shows you the things that you have felt. to have loved and ached and lost like opu to have yearned for an emotional companionship like charu to have felt life in its thrilling complexity is what it is to be a ray character it is you and i in our ordinariness inside the screen and outside this then is how you come to understand ray better you look at his films and then you look at yourself and once again you see a stunning repetition